so in today's session uh, we are going to discuss about water hammer uh, hydraulic surge analysis so i am starting with the session so first uh, let me take you through the agenda of today's session for next 15 minutes 55 minutes image graphics introduction you have already gone through that uh, i will take you through the efd introduction then introduction to hydraulic transients what are transients and how they are causing the issues then we will discuss about undesirable operating conditions and unexpected events types of transients uh, water hammer or hydraulic surge pressure of the main part uh, which we will be discussing then uh, what are the equations and terminologies related to this then i will take you to the efp impulse software uh, that is the tool which we use and which we promote here in India for the surge analysis. Uh, in AFT impulse, we will see some uh, wall closure and pump trip examples, how we can model, how we can see the results and how we can interpret them. Okay, so in between, uh, we will ask some poll questions. Poll questions uh, are the way to engage the audience. So. Uh, in this poll questions, you have to click the answer when it will appear on your screen. So there is a note for that. Uh, whenever uh, there is a poll question, you have to uncheck from your full screen mode. Then you will be able to click the answer. So please take care during the poll questions. If you are not able to click, then uncheck the full screen mode. Okay. So I am starting with the EFT introduction first. Uh, basically. EFT is the company from US. Uh, they are the world leader into the fluid flow and pipe network analysis software application. And we are one of the channel, channel partner in India and Middle East. We are the exclusive channel partner. Since we are using their tool, EFT, Fathom, Aero, and Impulse, and we are supplying here in India. So I would like to highlight their name first. They are founded in 1993. And uh, since then, they are the world leader into the fluid flow and pipe network analysis software application. And their primary business is on the same software tools for the flow analysis. So if I talk about the customers and the distributors, so they have the representatives like us in more than 40 countries and customers in more than 90 countries who are using the AFP products, Fathom, Hero, and Impulse across the globe. So here are the details uh, on the AFP website uh, for the contact, for sales, and other things. Now. Uh, I'm taking you to the topic, uh, our hydraulic transient search analysis. So first is what is hydraulic transients? So a transient phenomena occurs in a piping system when some event causes a departure from steady state. Usually uh, engineers and the engineering companies design for these steady state systems. They also check for the transient conditions, but whenever there is a departure from steady state conditions, like that suppose this wall or the control wall has been set for a particular flow rate like a flow control wall uh, or if we have a pressure control wall pressure sustaining wall if we are closing the wall suddenly or uh, our pump uh, which is running and supplying the flow rate if that suddenly trips or is there any changes occurs into our piping system due to any of the conditions it may be any condition which we will discuss in further slides what are those conditions so that departure from steady state to new state is a transient that we call a change in uh, state. So transient conditions is the process that piping system experience as it adjusts to the new conditions. Yes, we have already seen that. And transients occurs due to unacceptable operating conditions. What are those unacceptable operating conditions from the operation side, from the design side? Those might not be acceptable. To the team so due to this unacceptable operating conditions so they are basically created uh, by the events uh, which are happening into the system so those events are occurring due to changes in flow and pressure so if, uh, suppose we have a line with the flow rate thousand meter cube per hour and if there is a sudden change in flow rate we are stopping the flow uh, by suddenly by a wall or if we are changing at some location suddenly, then it may cause the issue. So there are two types of events. Events over which operator and designer have some control. They know that 
this will happen in our system so they are well prepared for that like pressure and flow changes in system during normal operating conditions uh, due to demand change or anything changes into the system pump changes the speed or something like that so some are uh, the events which they have the control and some are the events which are unplanned and unexpected those are not planned and they happen suddenly and they are not expected so what are this kind of events like power failure uh, this could be failure to your plant a unit or uh, maybe a section of your plant or maybe a pump house in pump pipeline uh, there could be another event pressure too high this may happen uh, due to many many reasons we cannot define a single reason for this pressure too low it may go up to your uh, vacuum pressure of the fluid it may go below to the uh, uh, atmospheric pressure then it may create the problem of your uh, we can say the pressure going below to the atmospheric pressure if there is a reverse flow in any system or any pipeline due to something like a pump trip or any other thing pipeline movement and vibration this may also cause this events if they are not supported properly flow velocity is too low or too high or something uh, it can be a combination of this events also that may happen so usually when we are designing the steady state systems we are not aware of this that this kind of thing can happen in our system so we have to be prepared for that so uh, causes of unsteady or the transient flow so one well known causes uh, is the rapid wall closure or opening as you can see uh, i'm showing here a pipeline with a wall okay so initially for the steady state flow is going from wall upstream side to the wall downstream side wall is fully open so now uh, it may be a gravity flow it can be a pump flow or it can be water it can be crude oil steam or anything so as soon as we suddenly close the wall so the momentum of the fluid which was going from this left side to this right side so it was going like that so suddenly we are breaking the momentum of fluid here velocity is suddenly brought to zero so this break in momentum is creating a very high pressure surge a very high pressure is created at this point and on to the downstream side of the wall you can see uh, the flow which was there it, it has gone away from this point so uh, this pressure which is generated at this point now it passes to the backward in the form of a pressure wave that we call a wave speed of the pressure which travels backwards to the upstream side since the flow has been stopped here here your fluid is not flowing only the pressure wave is traveling with a speed of around 1500 meters per second okay so uh, if if i take you to the further slide oh, sorry okay so th this is the event which is causing the problem here uh, so rapid wall closure or opening which is creating this issue uncontrolled pump trip this might also happen uh due to power failure or mechanical failure seal failure anything can cause tripping to your pump pump speed change or it may be a startup condition during the commissioning stage uh, when we are starting the pumps first time or if there is a drop in demand or sudden rise in demand so pump speed changes according to that the relief wall cracking in relief systems if suddenly a wall cracks open then this may also cause the problem of sudden uh, changes in the transient flow during the tank pressurization condition again during commissioning and other stages check wall slim uh, basically whenever we have the check wall at the downstream of the pump uh, when waves comes and goes back uh, during this kind of condition so that also create a secondary transient in our system so if check wall is too much responsive too much sensitive then this kind of problem may happen so these are the causes of unsteady or constant flows another could be the periodic pressure of flow condition the periodically conditions which are changing which are not defined initially during the design phase 
now uh, this transients we have discussed so what type of transients those are first one is a long term transients so they happen for a long time we also call them slow transients so they have simulation time period if we are doing an analysis for this transient that what happens in my system if this thing happens a pump trips or if we have three pumps one trips and second will start a standby pump so this kind of events if we are analyzing so time period may be minutes hours or days like uh, one more example if we have a tank filling case so how much time it will take to fill the pump fill the tank with the help of uh, current flow rate and the pump uh changes happening in this kind of uh, sys uh, in system or the transients the system parameters over long period of time so changes are happening at long period of time it take a long time and results are calculated at time steps of 1 or 5 or 10 minutes or it may be smaller so this time steps are the uh, time uh, we can say the station after which time we are calculating the results of the simulation so these are the time steps now this kind of activity we analyze with the help of eft fathom xps uh, which is the software from eft we don't need to go to the impulse for this kind of analysis the second time type of analysis is the short term transients or we call fast transients or one more name could be instantaneous transients for them the simulation time period may long for a few seconds or a few minutes since those kind of events or the transients happen instantaneously and they last for a very uh, small time let's say few seconds so they are called a uh, fast transient changes happening in system instantaneously like pressure surges this is the example of our uh, hydraulic pressure surge or we can say the water hammer so due to sudden valve closure or pump trip or anything now uh, the causes we have already discussed how pressure wave propagates through system that needs to be accounted now uh, since uh, this very high pressure wave is generated generated and it travels back to the upstream side uh, at the valve closure and uh, if we have a pump trip there is a down surge first in the, onto the downstream side pressure goes down first so uh, the at what speed this wave pressure wave travels that we need to be accounted so that is being done by this tools so for this kind of analysis we use eft impulse which we are uh, looking today now water hammer or hydraulic pressure surge so from this transients this is the phenomena that is happening so it is a common occurrence in flow system why it is common because it may happen in any piping system you may observe or you may not observe so some parameters are there if uh, those are the prevalent parameter then uh, this transient could be very disastrous and you can see the pipe burst or any other things and in some of the piping systems if uh, the pipes are supported properly and they have proper pressure rating pipe so you cannot see those things but you can see still vibration or movement in the pipelines even you can see this thing happening in your home also you can see this sound as well so that's why it is called a water hammer water hammer is a instantaneous transient phenomena it is happening instantaneously maybe 1 second 5 seconds 10 seconds so other names for this is a fluid transients hydraulic shock fluid hammer or it may be steam hammer oil hammer or gas hammer based on the fluid what we have it may happen into steam system steam pipeline oil pipeline gas pipelines but eft impulse tool which we are looking today is only for the liquid systems because it is more severe into the liquid system and uh, now I I have a small video I I would like to show you uh, which is explaining this phenomena. So I am going to play this video which which is having some uh, sound. So uh, I am just playing this now. It's travel naturally at a given pressure and rate until a change in their flow happens. These changes occur when a pump starts or stops, or when a valve is opened or closed in a distant length of the piping, or if power is lost. The loss of power on a pump can create a column separation as the fluid in the pipe continues to flow. The fluid continues to flow through the piping until the column senses the stopped pump. 
without the pump, the fluid flow now reverses direction and picks up speed until the vapor created by the column separation almost instantly collapses. The check valve closes after the vapor is dissipated due to the increased reverse flow pressure from the long length of piping. The fluid pressure created now builds in the long length of piping due to both the vapor collapse and the check valve closing. The pressure momentum of the fluid flow can result in a pipe rupture at a weakened point in the system, such as an elbow. The closing of a valve also can create pressure transients in the piping. As the water flows normally, a gate valve is shut a long distance away from the pump. The pump continues to run against the closed valve. The sudden closure of the valve, together with the momentum of the fluid column, can overstress the piping and can result in material failure as the pump continues to run. Okay, so I hope you have got a basic idea about this. A similar thing uh, can also happen in the oil pipeline. So um, I have a video for uh, oil pipelines or fuel pipelines. At the storage facility dispensing dock, a pump is supplying jet fuel from storage tanks to tanker trucks. If the pump fails or loses power during this operation, a column separation can occur in the pipe. The fuel reverses direction, causing pressure to build in the pipe at the check valve. This can cause failure in the piping at vulnerable points. The same situation can occur if the valve at the dispensing facility is open or shut for any reason. Pressure builds near the gate valve and piping is stressed, causing failure upstream. Okay, so uh, basically these videos are taken from uh, the website waterhammer.com. If you want to go into the detail about this, you can go to the website and you can have a look. So now this water hammer calculation part it is coming. Instantaneous water hammer, we call it instantaneous. So when we go to the theory part in the published books, so maximum theoretical pressure surge is given by the instantaneous water hammer equation is also called Joukowsky equation. So the equation is delta P equal to minus rho A delta V. Delta P is the change in pressure which is happening. And uh, rho is the density. A is the wave speed through which the wave is traveling, pressure wave. And V is the velocity of fluid which is being suddenly stopped. So delta V is the change in the speed. Similarly, this can also be written in the uh, form of the head change. So delta H equal to minus A by G delta V. So it is being used for a long time for this kind of calculations. So uh, basically, uh, the wave speed, uh, this is the formula. The magnitude of a water hammer transient depends on the wave speed of the liquid. So you can see the parameters K, rho, C1, K, D, E, E, what, is, what are these parameters? On all these parameters, this wave speed depends. So, X first is a, your liquid density in bulk modulus, K in rho, and the pipe ID and wall thickness. Uh, what is your thickness of the, uh, uh, we can say the pipe material, and the uh, what is the pipe ID? Also, it depends on the material properties. If you have a steel pipe or if you have a GRP pipe, so th that uh, increases or decreases your wave speed. So basically, it depends on all of these factors. Also, there is a parameter C1. So that comes from the uh, configuration of the pipe supports, which type of uh, pipe supports you are going to provide or what is there in your system. So these are all the parameters. Now, uh, this Joukowsky equation, which we are using from a long time, basically does not predict the maximum possible pressure from water hammer. Because uh, there are some events which may also happen in real world, like pipe friction. Since uh, whenever there is a surge or a, a pressure wave travels in your pipeline, so the pipe friction factor F is not the constant one. It, it changes during this time. So that is the one thing. Second thing, in your system, cavitation may happen if 
uh, the down surge pressure or the lowest pressure is reaching to your vapor pressure of the liquid it can create the issue of cavitation so when cavitation happens there is a column separation as we have seen in the video there was a column separation uh, droplets were uh, being created in the pipeline so whenever the column rejoins again so there is a uh, bursting of this uh, we can say the uh, vapors so that can cause a very high pressure about to your uh, surge pressure so this can cause the real issues so that we have to account and third one is the network effect uh, when we have a single pipeline we don't see any issue uh, we can calculate with the help of uh, Joukowsky equation but when we have the network the various pipe pipelines which are meeting at one point and which are going away so due to this network effect it may cause problem it, it may create very high pressure waves those are not being calculated by Joukowsky equation so due to this factors we need to uh, calculate this kind of uh, uh, pressure surges or the, we, this kind of analysis we have to perform with a proper appropriate computer software tool like e -Timples. so now coming to the quotes on pressure surges uh, if i talk about the quote uh, in asme b31.4 uh, in pressure transport transportation system for liquid hydrocarbons and other liquids there you can see uh, there is a note it refers directly to the maximum value of the overpressure establishing a limit of 10 percent about the design pressure so as per this quote you can go 10 percent about to your design pressure only so you need to take the mitigation measures so that you can bring that uh, sudden uh, pressure surge under the 10 percent limit of the your design pressure about uh, this things uh, is being told by the code and one more is there in b31.3 for process piping it can go up to the 33 uh, percent about to year allowable stress for uh, for the particular operating temperature so due to that uh, pressure surges the stresses should not go beyond to this point so uh, the, these things are mentioned in the code also there is one more uh, b31 point b which is under development uh, which is specifically coming more on to the uh, water hammer of search analysis now uh, at last uh, since we have already known about this uh, surge in water hammer problem what is happening so what are the problem statements an engineer has to answer this problem statements what is the maximum pressure to avoid bursting pipe fittings the max surge pressure similar the minimum surge pressure to avoid the crushing of the large dia pipes or to avoid the vacuum condition or the uh, we, we have to uh, check on this minimum pressure also so ensure proper uh, npsh available for the pump and what are the maximum uh, or the time varying imbalance transient forces due to this uh, transient pressure wave there are uh, imbalance forces in your uh, piping or the pipeline uh, usually at the elbow bands so those uh, we need to be uh, take care while we are to while the the pipe stress analysis team they are performing the stresses into the pipe so they need to do the dynamic analysis on uh, maybe scissor two or any other application so they need to take care for this forces and to predict if fluid reaches vapor pressure to if, if there is a cavitation in my pipeline or not we need to take care and uh, to size and locate surge separation devices at last after surge analysis uh, we we have to give the protection to our system or the pipeline so we have to give uh, proper surge separation devices like the surge tank accumulator uh, surge vessels or uh, vacuum breaker wall this kind of things okay for all these problems we have the problem solutions which uh, we are uh, discussing today that is aft impulse uh, so aft impulse uh, let me give you a brief idea about that first then we will see how we can model the uh, problem and we can see the results in aft impulse so it models water hammer or surge flow in pipe networks basically we define some of the conditions like uh, sudden wall closure we define we define the wall closure time and we see what is happening in our line or system we can define pump startup shutdown and uh, we can also see the 
speed changes into the pump along with inertia effects or without inertia effects. Then uh, when the relief oil is cracking, what is happening in the system, how much pressure surge is going up or down, that we can see. Uh, events which are defined uh, with the time or which can be defined with the, any other parameter like flow or pressure. So in impulse, we can define conditions like uh, if uh, there is a overpressure at some location in my system, then my pump should trip or my wall should start closing. So this kind of things we can define in EFT impulse. Uh, it also includes modeling of uh, control and relief walls as a part of system. Then vacuum breaker walls, pumps, accumulators, and surge tank. So basically, it can be any kind of system. It can be your power plant, cooling water systems. It can be your water pipeline. It can be your LNG pipeline. It can be crude oil pipeline. It can be any liquid system so there we can uh, model into the EFT impulse and we can analyze the surges it also includes a statistic solver this is one of the uh, unique feature i can say for this because in other tools you have to go to the first any statistic solver then you have to come back with the results into the uh, your tool then it will perform the surge analysis but in EFT impulse it also shows you the results statistic because it performs for statistic, then it moves to transient. So both results are shown to you simultaneously. Uh, we can also include uh, the, we can also calculate the unbalanced transient forces, which we have discussed, and we can graph them, we can even export them to any of the tool for the pipe stress analysis like Caesar 2 in the form of uh, force versus time data files or FRC files. So it is uh, quite integrated with the other tools also. So in AFT impulse, we have to, uh, we can say the add-on modules, if you want to perform some add-on capabilities, like if you want to perform surge analysis for slurry systems or slurry pipeline, then you can use SSL add-on module license. So basically it simulates this settling slurry behavior because uh, whenever there is a slurry system, the pumps behave differently. There is an issue for deposition uh, of solids into your pipeline, plugging, and other issues are there. So it behaves differently. So equations are different for this slurry simulation. So it simulates pump performance deg degradation also. Next, we have the AFT impulse PFA module, pulsation frequency analysis. So this is the tool for acoustic resonance or the vibrance, vibration calculations which are coming due to your flow and pressure pulsation. So with the help of this tool, we can predict and understand resonance frequencies in system due to PD pumps. Due to positive displacement pumps, what is happening in our system, what vibrations are coming due to uh, flow and pressure pulsation, we can uh, calculate and we can avoid those things. Next, uh, okay, so let me take you to the example uh, of our wall closure. So we have this example from the book title, Fluid Transients in Systems. Uh, it is by Valley Instructor. So we are using uh, water here for this example. At the bottom, you can see the screenshot. It has been taken from the software. So we have tank one, uh, which is supplying the fluid and we have this pipeline, long pipeline. So this is around uh, 150 meters of elevation at uh, this tank, J1 and pipe is around 500 uh, mm dia and uh, uh, your wall is at the end and pipe length is the 600 meters so uh, if we have the uh, properties of pipe material we can uh, put those properties and software will calculate the wave speed for us but here we are giving directly the wave speed since it was available from the book and the friction factor we are using as 0 0.018 inches for a steel so it is a steel pipe okay so also in this example uh, we will see how a uh, different wall closure profile as well as different time affects the pressure surges so as you can see in this uh, graph uh, this is the graph from the same example which i am going to show you so here we are using different wall, uh, closure profile of the walls if if it is closing linearly like in the red one what will happen and the green is for globe wall butterfly wall 
ball wall in blue color so how pressure changes if we have the different closure profile for the ball so okay so let me take you to the software first okay so this is the afd impulse uh, those who are new to this let me give you a quick idea about it we have basically this uh, uh, afd impulse uh, tool where we have this toolbox we can drag and drop our icons here and we have the interactive windows like this i will show you one by one so with the help of this we model our problem on workspace and we uh, give the inputs and we see the result so this is the wall uh, this is the tank we have 150 meters of elevation you can see it here and the pressure is zero bar g that is open to atmosphere we we have this wall uh, which is uh, having cv of 529.92 and this is an exit wall we have defined at the bottom now transient since we are analyzing wall closure transient so uh, let me show you so transient initially we have given like this that at t equal to 0 seconds cv is full open cv 529 and uh, t equal to 2 seconds cv is 0 that means in 2 seconds we have closed the wall so this is the closure profile cv was it is the full cv full open cv 529 and it is full closed cv that is zero so in 2 seconds it is closing and this profile is linear right now okay and uh, now this pipe uh, we have this uh, uh, 600 meter pipe 0.5 meter diameter base width 1200 and this is the toughness for the friction factor so uh, in aft impulse after this uh, we run the calculation using this button so first it performs a steady state then the transient so you can see in this window steady state has converged and this is the transient so we will go to the output so in output uh, these are the three sections so you can see here for the pipe one what are the steady state results volumetric flow rate velocity and all but uh, we are concerned about the pressure so you can see there is a pressure of around 26.58 bar it has reached so brighter we can understand with the help of graph results so i can go to the graph window so in this uh, we have already created some graph we just need to double click them so th this is the first closure profile then this is the uh, our pressure profile at uh, with respect to time at the inlet of the valve we can say so uh, let me show you which point is this on workspace we we have this point at the end of the pipe or the start of the valve so at this point what is happening with respect to time we are looking at this graph result so initially which was roughly around 14 or 15 bar that was we can say the steady state uh, pressure so uh, at the bottom you can see that time so 0 to 2 seconds we have closed the valve and uh, total simulation run time we have given 10 seconds so as soon as we start closing the valve the pressure was increasing and uh, you can see uh, this is the uh, your uh, highest peak pressure uh, which has reached the year which is roughly around uh, your 26 bar which we have seen already in the output so this is the then pressure wave which is going and coming as soon as the pressure wave goes towards your tank and it comes again so you can see a peak pressure here then pressure wave goes back then a down then up so this is the pressure wave going and coming so this is the effect of uh, pressure surges onto your pipeline also uh, i would like to show you Uh, what is happening when we are using a multiple wall profiles like this so i have created a scenario here there is a good feature that uh, you in the same model you can create various scenarios so i have created a scenario like a ball wall profile so in that uh, uh, we, we have the option we can input this by adding this table here we can create a cv versus time from open percent so uh, right now we have already given this input so we can use predefined options of low ball gate ball and other ball so uh, this is the cv versus open percent 
created by the software then we transfer let's say we are closing in two seconds and uh, uh, 0 0.01 second we want the time step uh, for this uh, one by one closure of the wall and we select the profile closing so this is it has created cv versus time at zero seconds it is full cv and at two seconds it is zero cv and let me show you the graph so this is your closer profile of the graph how wall uh, for the wall how wall is closing so this we are going to use in this one so that we have already given the input and uh, let me show you the results directly to the graph results okay so this is the result now we have so we can see here which was around 14 or 15 bar it has gone now up to 39 bar so by changing the wall closure profile from linear to uh, this one for the ball wall closure profile it is increased now so this way it may affect your system now pressure has increased surge pressure and then listens to your closing the wall also you can try the 20 80 percent uh, if in uh, 80 percent of time uh, how, how much wall i am closing in the rest 20 percent of time how much i am closing the wall so these things you can analyze with your own so uh, also let me show you how it is affecting with all four simultaneously so let me run uh, let me show you the graph combined graph it is the multi scenario graph here now so this is the latest addition to the eft impulse uh, latest feature now you can compare the graphs from various scenarios so we we have this profile here first so this is your closer profile red one was the uh, your uh, linear profile which was closing then we have different profiles so against this how it is changing the pressure so we, we have this uh, pressure surges into our line let me uncheck this one by one okay so this is the first one with the linear profile then uh, we have created one for the ball wall profile then if we switch to the butterfly wall so you can see there is a drop in pressure here that much drop is there so that that we can see how much it, it is there roughly around uh, it is around 36 so three bar surge has been reduced surge pressure has been reduced by changing this profile and uh, if we select the fourth one so we, we have again now if we are using a globe wall type then it is again reduced further so uh, basically this way the point is to convey that uh, you can analyze different closure profile also you can check for the different closure time in this example i have not focused on the closure profile because we have used only two seconds closure zero second and the two seconds but we are not going to the three seconds four seconds five second option so you can create a scenario and you can check for different closure profile that, that is the basically idea if you have the tool you can quickly model this run this and do the analysis so now let me switch to the ppt again okay so now we are taking an example of uh, water supply pipeline uh, which is having a pump house you can see in the image suddenly the pump trips so what happens in the pipeline which is supplying the fluid to some uphill reservoir or tank so this is just an schematic at the bottom we are taking the water from a lake or a river or any other source and we are using a pump here i am showing one pump but it may be pump house with three four five pumps with some standby pumps then this is our pipeline and this is our discharge reservoir so this is for the representation purpose so when we model this kind of problem in EFT impulse, it will look like this. So we have the tank, supply tank, and receiving tank onto the right side. This is our 21 kilometer pipeline, which we are going to model. And uh, uh, these three pumps are there. We can analyze either one pump trip, two pump trips, or all three pumps tripping at the same time. So what is happening into my pipeline? So that we will be analyzing. In this example, it is 21 kilometer line. 
pump house is at 406 meter and the receiving reservoir is at, is at around 4, 514 meter of elevation. So at pump house, we have three pumps in parallel. Also, we might have the diesel generator based pumps for standby power uh, goes on or trips. So that might also be there. Right now, I have not modeled that. And uh, so we have to check the pipeline for potential pressure surges due to pump power failure. So if usually it may happen like it can go down pressure, it can go up pressure. So that we will see into the results, what is happening. Usually at the pump discharge site after pump trip, there is first a down surge. Down surge means that means initially after, uh, just after your pump, the pressure goes down first. So let me take you to the if samples. Okay, I'm just opening the example which I have prepared. Okay, this one. So in this example, we, we have this uh, tank, uh, the supply tank or the supply reservoir, and this is the receiving. I would like to highlight one thing. This, of course, this 21 kilometer pipeline won't be a straight one. This might be question in your mind. So let me show you. This is uh, 20986 meters. Dia is 500 mm. And in the optional tab, we have the option we can use the feature use intermediate pipe elevations. So with the change data of the elevations of profile, what we were having available, I have this 29 points. So how elevation is changing with respect to different different uh, length of the pipe, this data we have. So when we include this, so this is your total profile of the elevation profile you can see here. So it is 400 meters to 514. Now, suppose uh, you want to see the steady state results that I have already run. So here you can see the steady state results. All three pumps are supplying 400 meter cube per hour and we have total 1200 meter cube per hour. Velocity is 1.698 meters per second. And the rest of the data we can see is required. This is the pump summary. It gives you pump results like this, suction pressure, discharge pressure, and PSS data also. And other related if you have efficiency data, you can also model that. So uh, here we, we have used this pump. So in AFT impulse, you have the option for centrifugal pump, PD pump, or pump as a turbine. We are modeling an integrated check wall along with the pump. So here we can select the data at what RPM and at which impeller dia we are running. So since we have given the input for both the impeller dia, how it is changing, you can see like this. So uh, first we can give this kind of configuration. So this is one of the beautiful thing what I like about EFT impulse. You can create all of your pump once then you can use it lifetime in your any of the model if you have the same pump in any other project. So transient. Now this pump is stripping. So how we are defining the transient? So for the transients, you have the option without inertia and with inertia. You can define like this. So it is uh, inertia we have given here. Now I'm closing this. And uh, if we run this, like one pump trip, two pump trip, three pump, all pump trips. So let me directly open the final case. So I will be showing you one by one. So let me take you to the graph results. So we, we have the multi scenario graph for the line pressure. Okay. Uh, first, let me uncheck all of them. I will show you one by one. So when first pump is stripping and rest two pumps are running, what is happening? So this is the result for maximum stagnation pressure and minimum stagnation pressure. This red color is the maximum pressure, which is in your line of 21 kilometer at the bottom. You can see it is 0 to 21. And uh, we, we can also see values at multiple places. Also, so we can see there is no issue here in this particular case. Since your peak pressure is uh, roughly around your 19 bar is the, uh, we can say the 
operating pressure and peak pressure is not going too much also your down surge is around 15 bar but it is not reaching to your lowest side of zero or the vacuum condition if we go to the two pump strip so you can see now from 19 bar it has reached up to 27 bar so this is the issue we can say in our line also downside it has gone further more down with comparison to this first case and if we go to the third one like maximum and minimum stagnation pressure when all pump traps oh okay so now here you can see it is touching the zero zero bar line so it is reaching to nearby to your uh, uh you can say below to your vapor pressure so here uh, there was a issue let me show you what is the issue when i created a vapor volume how vapors are generating in our line so this is the case so when one pump trips there is no vapors when two pump trips there are small vapors so this is the cavitation issue basically which i am showing you and when all three pump trips simultaneously then we have a very large vapor volume so we can say finally as a result that due to this uh, pump trip uh, the cavitation is happening in our line and uh, we can see the vapors so based on this now uh, you can go to your model and you can put either a, a surge tank or, a, uh, or uh, any other uh, surge vessels or any surge suppression devices or you can uh, use uh, like if, if i show you the vapor volume which are occurring and the this is your elevation profile so at this particular peak points basically this peak point second and the third so at this intermediate peak points you are seeing those uh, vapor volumes because these are intermediate high points so you have to provide the vacuum vacuum wall there so we can provide those vacuum breaker work and we can analyze the result. So uh, basically the idea was to show you the analysis that how easily we can perform this kind of analysis. Even you can also perform if you have a fourth pump, then fourth pump will start after this three trips or one trips. So with some time gap of five seconds, 10 seconds. So what will happen during that time period? So those kind of things we can also analyze.